Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the Pottery Corner, my studio, down on the south coast of England near Chichester. Well, where have I been? How many lovely messages have I had to ask me if I'm all right? So thank you. If that's you and you know who you are, there are quite a large number of people who have asked where on earth I've been for the last couple of months. So in explanation, um, I had an unexpected operation. So um, I've been recuperating um, and having a little bit of time not carrying around 12 and a half kilogram bags of clay. Um, and then of course we had Art Trail in uh, the end of April. So the studio was set up for Art Trail. So there were no students here. So it's been a bit of a, a funny couple of months. So if you've missed me, I'm sorry, but I'm back now, back in the saddle. The classes are back. Everything's in full flow again. So everything is fine, I'm pleased to say. So thank you for your concern, but um, we're, all, we're all systems go again. So here we are back with another glazed kiln fire opening. Um, as usual, the kiln is actually completely cold because we've just been away for a couple of days which is why I have such a lovely radiating face. We've been away to the seaside in Dorset, which is lovely, and um, sat in the sunshine and didn't realise that my face was getting quite so red. So um, I don't think I can call it youthful bloom anymore, but um, nonetheless, I probably look a bit red. So that's why it looks a bit odd, I must admit. I looked at it in the mirror and thought, oh, goodness me, that's a bit pink. But there we are. Um, right, so shut up yattering, Sarah. Kiln lid up. You do know I've had a sneaky peek. I did actually have a sneaky peek when the kiln was at 100 degrees. So we just literally, Leslie and I, one of my students, because one of her pieces is on the top, we just had a little sneaky peek inside the kiln. So um, this is Leslie's piece that we were sneaky peeking at. Um, and Leslie has made over the last um, few months a breakfast set. I'm just going to brush the sand off of there. Um, a breakfast set. So she's made um, a toast rack with a marmalade pot in the shape of an orange and um, some jugs and some plates. Um, and one of the designs that she's um, done has been a homage to uh, Clarice Cliff, the Bizarre Range. Those of you who are old enough will remember this. Isn't that lovely? What a thing to put your morning toast on. So that is a sort of a uh, a homage to Claris Cliff, as I say, and if you've looked at her um, ceramics before, you'll know that she uses these bright yellows and bright oranges. And actually, without even knowing that, that that was Claris Cliff, um, that is a beautiful design and, and well executed by Leslie. This is all done with underglaze, um, and then she's used a henna bottle with the black underglaze to get the lines. So very nice, Leslie, very pretty, and it will go with the rest of your set. So that's a goodie to start with. Um, there is a test tile in here that I will talk about a bit later. Um, now, hmm, I threw a really lovely, beautiful, big bowl and um, I put some transfers on it and then I wanted it for the art trail. So I thought, do you know what? I'll just stick that in the bisque firing and hope for the best. Why do we do it? Why do we do it? We spend so much time throwing, trimming, putting the transfers on, etc., etc. Put it in the bisque firing and guess what? It wasn't dry. Well, of course it wasn't dry. I kind of knew it wasn't dry when I put it in, silly girl. Um, so uh, this beautiful bowl, which, um, as I say, I threw on the wheel, um, when it was bisque fired, <laughs> it blew the bottom out, as you can see. And I thought to myself, it's such a shame because it's such a beautiful bowl and the transfers are really nice. Um, they are from, is it Ceramica? Ceramica transfers. I'll put the link in the description. Um, beautiful. I, I did cut them out, I must say. They didn't actually come like that, but I did cut them out to go around the circumference of the bowl. Um, and then I thought to myself, what am I going to do with that? Because it's too nice to you know, chuck it in the recycle pot. So I thought I'd have a go at putting some glass in the bottom didn't really work. Not very successful, which is a real shame, as I say, because beautiful glaze on the back, which is um, Amico Obsidian underneath that two coats, underneath two coats of Amico's Indigo Float. And I love the way that blue comes out. 
it is absolutely beautiful and it always comes out like that so it's a really good doer um but yeah i didn't get away with it so i've i've lost the cost of the glaze and the glass but it was worth a try which is a real shame because it's such a pretty bowl have to make another one as i always say they're never quite the same though are they but there we are that was me uh right let's just get rid of this shelf okay so let's see what else we've got in here barbara we're going to get rid of the props stick them up there out of the way so they don't damage anything and we'll see what else we've got in here um this is one of quite a number of little things that are going to come out so i'll just pop that there um huh. now lisa has made a dish for her son with that's the cookie that's come off the bottom with the um alfa romeo logo um his car is a mito now lisa i hope that i will see you before you see the video because we used jessica putnam phillips cobblestone brush on um, and I have to say it is ghastly. I mean, you know, there's not much you can say about it. It's pinholed. When we put it on, it was very thick and very claggy. And I think that's probably the problem. So what we might try and do is actually just put another glaze over the top and hope um, that we can do something about that. And that is Amico's iron, iron yellow on the reverse. Um, but she's used um, some vinyl cutout and then we put some black slip over the logo and then the glaze over the top of that. But I have to say that's really nasty. So um, we will see what we're going to do with that. And I think the problem with Jessica Putnam Phillips's brush on glazes um, is that the consistency isn't quite right. There is not um, a thing on the front that says how much water to add. Um, so I have sort of tried to sort of play it by ear, but I have to say that I think that this was too thick. It was much too thick when she was painting it on. So Lisa, we need to do something about that, I'm afraid. Um, we'll talk about glazes a bit later on. There's, there's lots of people asking lots of questions about glazes. So, um, once we've finished unloading, we'll have a little chat about that. Okay. So half shell. Okay. So the next thing out of this kiln apart from more props, is um, the other of Leslie's breakfast dishes. And this one is equally lovely, a slightly different style. Um, this is glaze combination. So we've got just transparent over our stoneware. She's used a round all of um, Amoco's Cobalt, which is the deep blue. This blue on the background, the sky blue, is um, Jessica Putnam Phillips's Chun Blue. And that is a really good doer. Uh, the sun is done in a yellow underglaze. Uh, the green, I think, is wasabi. That looks like iron yellow. And that looks like adventurine. Um, so she's just put a little sort of seasidey scene on there, landscapey scene, very pretty. Um, and with the other plate that matches her other bits and pieces, Go together really nicely the colors are good so well done leslie that's another good one um they were just slab built plates using a template let me just get this half shelf out there's so many bits and pieces in this kiln i've got half shelves and all sorts right so kathy has been making some fish um, mobiles i suppose you'd call them so these are the heads and they're um they're sort of slightly glazed on the inside so i've had to sort of prop them slightly funnily um so this is the top with his little fishy face on which is amico's storm and then she's made if you like she's made scales that go down in size um, and again i shall have to take these props out once i've uh, finished videoing so they sit one underneath the other and hang on a thread with a bead in between so that one is um amico's downpour 
and that one is Amico's Rainforest um, and as you can see they're going down in size there's actually two here she's made one before which was really pretty so a couple of her friends said oh could you make me one always the way when you're a potter that one's actually slid off well that's made a nice mess of my uh, oops that's made a nice mess of the shelf right so that one has actually fallen off its stand as you can see lovely and uh, just uh, I'll have to chip that off it will come off hopefully without breaking that one is blue lagoon and there are others more yet more in the bottom that one is fog I think that one goes there so we've got storm downpour rainforest blue lagoon fog wasabi next one down wasabi I hope you can see these on the side and then the bottom one is glacier Amico's Glacier, these are all Amico Celadon glazes. And then the very bottom bit is a fishtail. So if you can imagine, they're stacked one on top of the other on a cord and they'll, it'll move in the wind. Lovely. She made, as I say, she made one before. Really very nice. So that's what they are. There's lots and lots of bits in the kiln of this. Loads of them. And actually quite good because you can fit them round all the other bits and pieces that are going in the kiln which is quite useful get the rest of those out that's rainforest again some of them are stuck and some of them aren't um, these are little kiln props that I've made there is a video on um, making kiln props and things using the um, uh, neochrome wire they, they, the neochrome wire that I use is actually um, when I changed the elements, I used the the pins that were pinning the elements in. Um, and these are Kathy's as well. So she made some soap dishes. So the soap sits on here, and then obviously the water drains from there. Rather nice. That one again is Blue Lagoon. Um, there is texture on there, but because Blue Lagoon is a, um, a more opaque glaze, you can't actually see the texture, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so, you know, you've got to be aware if you're using Amoco Potter's Choice glazes that they will cover your texture if it's not deep enough or if the glaze is too thick. Um, the other one she has glazed much more successfully, in my opinion, with Amoco Pear. And you can see the texture on this one because it hasn't covered it up because it's a Celadon glaze. Very nice. So they are, they are very nice and she made her own template which is always good so it's her unique design um let's, let's move that slightly find the other fish tail so there's the other tail that's in pear amico pear if i didn't say quite nice that amico pear it's like a like a fresh green um and that is another test tile which again i'll stick out the way uh, Janet has been making some thin slabbed vases um, and if I turn it round, oh dear, came through the bisque okay but it has actually shredded itself right the way down here, I hope you can see that, um, and cracked right the way through the middle of a slab. I tell you what, sometimes you do wonder how the stresses and strains of clay will go in the kiln because there's no reason for that to have done that. Um, she's, she's a perfectly good um, slab builder. No reason why that will have done that, but there's obviously some stress in that slab that has gone in the glaze firing when it didn't go in the biscuit firing. Um, she's used, uh, as you can see, a B roller. So we have some rolling pins upstairs that came from pastry made in Poland. Um, and then she's used a combination of underglazes, a uh, black underglaze and um, marigold, Amoco marigold over the top. Um, very successfully, lovely pattern, but ouch. I mean, I suppose if you were going to put it on a side, uh, you could always do it that way around, but I'm not sure that you would actually get very much water in it because it is actually split almost to the base of there. So that's a shame. I'm sure Janet will be rightfully disappointed with that one right uh okay one last thing 
save the best till last. So some of my girls who have been coming to the studio for quite some time suddenly decided that they want to make some poppy heads. Well, you know, as well as I do, that if you look on the playlist, there's a whole tutorial on how to make these poppy heads. So if you haven't watched it, find the playlist. I'll leave the I'll leave the link at the end. Um, there's actually, oh, I don't know, two or three. There's, there's the one of how to make them, the one of how to use the oxides and put the glass on, and then one showing how they come out. So there's three videos on that. Um, and this is, wait for it, oh, gorgeous, look. This is Jane's. How about that? So this is made in craft crank clay. I won't say too much about it because if you want to know, as I say, there is a whole playlist on on how to make this. Um, craft crank clay with copper oxide, which is this sort of blacky bit, um, and then using um, bullseye frit, uh, mixing up the glass on the top. In fact, I've got up here, um, this is Fern's glass mix to go on the top. So we mix the glass colours up a little bit. Hope you can see that. Um, so when when Fern's um, poppy head goes into the kiln, I will tip the glass onto the top so that it doesn't go everywhere. But back to Jane's. Yummy, yummy, yummy. She should be really proud of that. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And um, they're making some different size ones to make a set. So really very, very nice indeed. Lovely glass dripping. And luckily for me, um, I use these big cookies underneath them. Ha 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 ha, look. See, just as well, literally just on the edge of there, but there's nothing on the kiln shelf, so lucky for me. Um, so that's good. And that is all that is in the kiln for today. Let's pop this down. And we'll shut the kiln down. And uh, have a look at some of your messages. Right, so starting off with uh, glazes. So big discussions, um, people have been sending me messages, uh, Claire Williams being one of them, um, who comes from Bangor in North Wales, hello Claire if you're watching, um, sent me a message um, about the results that she was getting with Amoco Potter's Choice um, and said that she has her work fired in a community um, uh, pottery studio but they only fire to 1200 degrees Celsius or centigrade um, and I think that's the reason why Claire you're not getting such good results from the Amoco glazes as we get in the studio here because I take my kiln up to 1230 degrees on a glaze firing um, so I mean it doesn't sound very much 30 degrees but it probably is enough for it not to be taking it quite high enough and also, if it's a community pottery and, and they've used their kiln for a lot, long, long time, it might be that the kiln's not even getting to 1200. So um, maybe there's something to be said for somebody putting some witness cones in there to see how high the kiln is going. Um, but, I mean, obviously, when you're a hobby potter and you don't have anywhere to get your kiln work fired, it is difficult to sort of say to them what temperature it is that you need for your own glazes to go up to but I would say 1200 is probably a bit low on a glaze firing so I hope that answers your question I have actually answered you on email a little while ago in more um, depth than that but I just wanted to cover it here because it is something that people ask me a lot so yeah 1200 um, centigrade not probably not enough I take mine to 1230 and it has a 15 minute hold at the top temperature as well so it's kind of dwelling at that temperature for 15 minutes so I hope Claire that that might help you um, I also had a lovely message um, and I and I love the um, <laughs> I love the um, email address which is Adam's Sausage I don't know why because she's called Lindsay <laughs> Hello, Lindsay. So Lindsay sent me a really lovely, lovely, lovely long message to say, <laughs> I just wondered if you had access to a secret supply of Amoco. Oh, if only, Lindsay. We are all in the same boat with these Amoco glazes, aren't we? Um, I mean, obviously running the studio, um, I use Amoco glazes for the students' benefit. Um, and I do have almost all of them. There's probably five I haven't got 
Potter's Choice. Um, and they're the brown ones. Not much of a brown girl me, so I don't like Chino and I don't like the old oil spot and I don't like Albany, whatever it is. Um, so yes, we are all having trouble getting hold of Amico glazes. So I do not have a magic wand that says this is where to go and get your Amico glazes, I'm afraid. I, I wish I did. Um, I am finding that I am trying to replace some of the Amico glazes that I just cannot get hold of, Sky being one of them. Um, and as I was saying earlier about this lovely plate of Leslie's, that the Jess's brush on Chun Blue, it's not the same as Sky, but it's not bad. Um, so we have slightly um, brought this one in when I can't get hold of a colour that I want. Um, but as I said earlier, Jess's, Jess, Jessica Putnam Phillips glazes, the brush on ones, hmm, I, I, jury's out for her glazes for me really, but it's a case of having to use them because of the supply of Amico. Now, um, I did buy myself, and, and I didn't actually know that these existed, so that just shows that I hadn't looked far enough, um, that there were Amico glazes that were not Potter's Choice or Celadon glazes. So basically what we use in the studio is Amico Potter's Choice and Amico Celadon glazes. Um, but there appears to be other um, ranges in the Amico glazes. So I thought that I would give them a go. Now, so this is Celebration Liquid Glazes, uh, High Fire uh, number 129, Baby Blue. Um, and actually, it's nice. It's, it's very opaque, um, but I'm going to give it a go layering it with my Potter's Choice glazes to see what happens to it. It almost gives you the coverage of a slip coverage. Um, but nonetheless, nice colour. And again, as I was saying earlier, if you can't get hold of a particular colour, we've got to go somewhere, haven't we? So uh, that one, as I say, is a Celebration Liquid Glaze. Um, this one is a matte glaze. Um, I'm not overly keen on matte glazes, but the students like to use them. Um, and that one is a Sahara Liquid Glaze, again by Amico. And again, it's one that I didn't know that they did. So um, this is a Sahara liquid glaze, again, high fire. Um, and that one is called turquoise. And actually that is a nice matte, proper turquoise glaze. And I think having um, used the Potter's Choice, there isn't really a proper turquoise in the Potter's Choice range. So that one is really nice. Um, and I got them from, now, where did I get them from? I think they came from Potclays. Um, so, I mean, in England, we use Scarva, um, Blue Matchbox. Um, uh, there's one in, in Stoke-on-Trent that I use that I can't remember the name of. Uh, Bath Potters. There's, there are a number, but to be fair, they're all having issues with um, getting hold of Amico. So I think that it is definitely a knock-on effect from the COVID situation with the tanker um, containers being in the wrong place at the wrong time and also a raw materials problem. So if anybody has any bright ideas about how to get hold of Amico glazes, please share it with us as a group because we're all um, suffering slightly. But I must say, I was quite pleased with those. And as I do some more test tiles, I'll let you know how they layer with the other glazes. So um, that's that. Now, a few shout outs to people who have actually had a go at the tutorials that are on the channel. So first one, Ellen, Ellen, I'm going to get your name wrong. Kalowski has had a go at making the poppy heads, um, similar to this one from the tutorial that we were talking about earlier. Um, so this is Ellen's poppy head. Lovely, lovely. She's in Florida in the United States. Um, looks like she's made two, actually, because there's a different one on the back. Hope you can see that. So well done, Ellen. That's always lovely to see um, other people's take on that project so if you make the poppy heads please send me a picture link to my website is in the description below this one is from maria gracia tassi she's had a go at the um, mono printing and using the wonky pop technique so this is a mug by the looks of it hand built um, with a lovely mono printed um, pattern on it Really nice, Maria. Thank you for sending me that. You're in Italy, so thank you for watching all the way from there. 
Uh, this one is from Eliza from the Netherlands. Um, and again, she's had a go at the monoprinting. Thank you for sending me those. So she's made a slab with the monoprinting and then made some little dishes. So those are really lovely. Again, really lovely texture on there and has used the um, Satsuma netting or similar. Um, and that gives a really good effect. And again, there's a playlist on the channel on monoprinting. There's one on preparation, one on um, making the slab with all the bits and pieces and then one on how they came out. Um, this one is from David in Chobham, which is in Surrey in the um, UK. He said he's a new potter and he's just finished his first course with the, his local adult learning. And he's been watching my excellent YouTube, YouTube instructional videos. Oh, thank you, David. Uh, looking forward to giving it a go. So um, David has actually also done um, a mono printed platter. This one's lovely. Use some really nice um, stencils on there really really successfully so keep going David keep sharing what you're working on I love to see other people's work so thank you for sending me that now a few um a few videos ago which was probably a little while ago now Heidi Dirksen Heidi oh, I just love this sent me a little note to say that her special needs student had decided that she was going to have a go at making the wonky pot and um, Heidi bought a template uh, and again, the template is available on the Etsy shop. So um, there's a wonky pot tutorial and the template is available. Um, so she said that um, her client was going to make it. And indeed, she's now sent me the finished article, which her client said gave to her mother for Mother's Day. Ah, oh, are we ready? You're going to love it. It's just gorgeous. So you've seen this in its um, greenware state. But this is the finished article. Look at that. I mean, it's just absolutely wonderful, Heidi. Thank you so much for sending the finished piece through. So that one's the cat and the one over the page, which, <laughs> which I probably like even more, is this little owl. Look at him. Isn't he cute? Look at his little feet with his little owl feet. And beautiful colour. Lovely. So Heidi, thank you so much for sending me that. Really, really nice. That's always much appreciated by me. Um, I'm going to quickly do Student of the Week. Da, 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 da. We haven't done Student of the Week for a while. Uh, so Student of the Week does, of course, go to... How can it go to anybody else but the lovely Jane for this beautiful poppy head, which I think she's going to be blown away by. Really, really lovely. So it's, it's always nice to take poppy heads out of the kiln. Something that, you know, I like to make and um, it's nice when the students make them as well. So well done, Jane. That's lovely. Uh, now, what else to say? Um, thank you for watching. As always, thank you for your concern about my absence. Um, I'm hoping to be back on a fairly regular basis as before. Um, but uh, but as I say, thank you so much for all your notes of concern. Um, there were a lot of them, so it's really nice, really nice to have people just send a little message just to say, are you OK? Um, yes, I am. Thank you very much. And I shall see you all on the next one. Bye for now.